Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Becky and Boca show. I have a celebrity in here tonight. I have actress Diana Durango. Hi. And if you don't know the latest fashion trend is off the shoulder, I think <laughs> I think we're proving it tonight. <laughs> So, um, Diana came in to do an interview with me, and you've done how many movies? Did you say 30? I think it was 30. And I was really movies. surprised. I was like, oh. And hey, I, I you just I Googled like, oh. it. She Googled I herself. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and I've seen in several of them. You're a very, very good actress. Thank you. And um, the most recent one is, uh, there's a little uh, trailer on my Facebook page today, mm -hmm. and it's about suicide, yes. suicide prevention, Something right? Something that's really important. Can, Absolutely. Can you tell us about that one? So the film is about suicide, pr suicide because of the fact that we wanted to uh, showcase suicide prevention, make sure that people really know things about mental health issues, right? So there's a woman that, I can't give it away. So there's a okay. woman that's coming to terms with her life and her mother, and um, she can't deal with life. And she's in this place where she's looking back on her life, she's <clears throat> coming to terms with what happened, and you realize that she's killing herself and um she's gonna she's going to commit suicide she's going to commit suicide okay. and it, it's the idea of when you come to terms with what happened in your past and sometimes it's hard sometimes it's just in there and you and just don't, don't want to look yeah, at it buried and once you get to that place and once you feel it it's ugly it really is ugly um but it's healing and it might save you um mm -hmm. it's a saving grace so to speak oh I, so, I, yeah. I, I saw the trailer and i thought it was fantastic and you know um Suicide seems uh, amongst young people these days is uh, a lot more. I don't want to say popular, it's but in yeah. vogue, right? Right, so like, I know yeah. it's horrible. It's it, so I'm glad that uh, that there's stuff out there now to uh, to help people with um, entertainment. I w a big thing as of right now that we're trying to do. We're trying to showcase, not showcase, but really let people know. Like, look, there is a mental health issue, and it's okay to be depressed. It's okay to not feel good it's okay to have anxiety more I mean, and more kids are getting treated for depression yeah, yeah. absolutely I mean, and there's like, nothing well, wrong with that no it's, it's the stigma is gone we're all here and i i have generalized anxiety disorder i mean i am like this all the time because of the fact that well, there's so much going on in the world mm -hmm. i mean way back in the day we were able just to do one thing at a time and because of the fact that we have computers and we have all of the social media i mean you know this, people are right? living on social media right mm -hmm. so you can do 10 things at once and we're expected to do 10 things at once and you're mm -hmm. like i can't do this right now so um it's just good to know that you know we are not alone we all have anxiety i think we that's the important that. thing it's it's nothing to be ashamed of and i think yeah. uh, with college kids that's that's being um I think kids are more comfortable now coming forward Absolutely. and admitting that they have a problem. And in college too, I think I think a lot of it has to do with um, peers and cliques and groups and feeling like oh, you don't fit in. Yes. I think that's what causes a lot of depression in, in young people at that age. There's a feeling, uh, I don't know, I was talking to my mom about this. I said, Mom, when you were in college, was there that pressure? Did you feel a lot of pressure? She goes, you know, I just went to college, you, you took your classes, you, you finished, yeah. you got married, it was great. <laughs> Right now, it's, you know, there's so much competition. Everybody needs to get the grade and not only get the grade, but you need to have an A and then you have to make sure you're going to go to graduate school. Back in the day, you just graduated everybody college Everybody went a job. to college for four years and got a job yeah. when they got out. Yes. And now you have, you know, it's <laughs> you like, don't know okay, what you're gonna be doing. you better have a master's. And like, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to have And even if up, you do, that's not going to guarantee anything. It's not going to guarantee anything. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you look at the extent as to even what parents are doing now, that thing that happened a few <gasps> days ago. I mean, with Yale and people, Harvard and yeah, that. people are really wanting their kids to do well, and it's getting to that point where we have pushed Pressure. ourselves to that to that area where we're doing things that aren't so good, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure our kids get into the right school. But it puts a lot of pressure on kids. Right. So it's school. It's having to look good. It's having to go over and, and make all sure. the Instagram and social media, too. It's insane. Uh, yeah. It's in somebody said, mm -hmm. you kind of look a little chunky. And I said, you know what? <laughs> I'm a Latin woman. I just they were like, you're kind of you're kind of getting there. And I said, so I said my, that to you. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh and God. it bothered me for the longest time <laughs> until I worked with Amber Rose on the film. She goes, oh, honey, look at my booty. My booty is completely fine. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Yes. I was like, I have a booty. I'm a Latina. And it's loud and proud. And I love it. So if you have a booty, you keep it's it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just That's about funny. owning yourself, you know? Yeah. And and when however, people are young, they're a little insecure. And they get, a, you know, like you yeah. said, somebody said that to 
Most people would be devastated. It was horrible. I remember being young. I was in a sorority, and I love my sorority sisters. But I was in that rut. I had anxiety. All these girls are beautiful. They had blonde hair, gorgeous, and I'm this. And here I am with my booty, right? <laughs> and I'm going to be very honest with you because that's that's where I am right now in my life. I had an eating disorder, and that was very hard for me. Uh. I was restricting food, and I wasn't eating, and I was like celery. It was celery and maybe if i was lucky i'd have some peanut well, butter like the worst water. tasting food on the planet it's that's what you settled on <laughs> celery and i kept on wondering i was like how can these girls eat these cheeseburgers and i'm like oh my god that looks so good they're like yeah it's just one some and i'm like no no i don't um and th- so the pressure to be pressure. thin the pressure to fit in all that is that that's all- probably why there's so much much um I don't want to say uh, I mental hate health issues, or but mental health. Like, yeah. it's just there's events Depression. in our life that mm-hmm. that are affecting how we how we deal with life, and it gets mm-hmm. to a point where you can't manage it because right. it is that's where the disorder comes. And it in. used to be back in the day when I was in college, if someone had that, they didn't talk about it. Nope. Nobody mentioned it, it was God a shameful forbid. thing. But now mm-hmm. I, I like the fact that uh, that it's out there and yeah. it's people I, can be open about it. it. Just people, they're going to facilities. The rehabilitation centers are, are getting nicer. I have never been to one. I used to work in some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they're gorgeous. I mean, they're absolutely beautiful. They're hotels, and I'm like, okay. I want to stay there. <laughs> That sounds Sign awesome. Yes, please. <laughs> Some equine therapy. Yes, please. And a massage. Yes. Um, but it's becoming not more accepted. It's just uh, more um, understood. Yeah. If that makes sense. And you're mm-hmm. not some crazy whack job And that's kind of what you, this um, little movie you did was about to show that there's no shame in uh, asking for help. Yeah. And that's at the end. She goes over. Mm-hmm. She's like, help me. She finally asks for help. Help me. Yeah. And there's all you need to do is say it. Tell help. somebody. Tell somebody. Right. Yeah. And the other thing is, it's, ho- it's horrible. You need to know the signs. So, yes, there's somebody that needs help, but mm-hmm. there are people that they are telling you help me, and we just don't listen to it. You know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. So, okay. Um, there are people that would say, I don't, I don't have friends. I, I don't, I don't want to deal with anything all day long. I just I want to sleep. That's, that's a sign. Oh, wanting to sleep all day. Okay. If they... If they really didn't care if they didn't want help. They wouldn't Might tell you. Stay a little closer to your I'm mic. sorry. Okay. They wouldn't. They wouldn't tell you, right? They wouldn't say to you, "I don't sleep all day." Yeah. They just. They just would sleep oh, all so day. Oh, so you tell say you. they're trying to tell you to? They're telling you, like, okay. look, these are my symptoms, and mm-hmm. we just are like, oh yeah, whatever, cool. We look mm-hmm. the other way, and we're just like, yeah. just be happy. Yeah. They don't, you know, they're telling you, I'm not eating. Yeah, just or, be happy. Okay, yeah, I just understand. be happy. It's mm-hmm. great. This life's awesome. Like sometimes people don't need to hear that. Sometimes no, that people need help. to hear. Let, let, let me, me know what's you. going on. Mm-hmm. Like, what is going on with your life? That's okay to feel like that. I felt like that as well. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people just need to hear that. They don't need that. Everything's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? What you're are you young. Doing? You're trying to sure, yeah. shape up. No, it's, yeah. you're, they're really going through something. And mm-hmm. it's just, some of these things are so traumatic. Breakups. Oh, my gosh. Can you imagine how many, like, you probably went through this. Oh. How many breakups? <laughs> I can't count them. Did we go through? Like, I can't <laughs> and take this get, anymore. And What's you, wrong and with you can be me? my age and look back and think, like, like, what the that heck? guy was never going to be anything right. <laughs> in my and, life. And you look and you're like, wow, I cried over you. <laughs> over him? <laughs> wow. But thank you for making me stronger. Uh, no, that, Lady Gaga, part, right? right? Lady Gaga's yeah. speech is like, she went through the whole thing. And she's uh-huh. like, well, thank you for making me stronger. And that's the other thing is that. With mental health issues, you're not stuck there. I think that that's the other thing. People always feel they, like... They can't get out. They feel helpless. Right. And mm-hmm. my thing, um, I like Kabbalah. Like, Kabbalah is a, a very, very big thing for me. Mm-hmm. And they have this idea that you can make light from darkness. So, I was like, okay. whoa. And there was, like, a lot of stuff that happened. I was, like, losing people left and right in my life. Things just weren't going right, right? Mm. And... I was like, oh, I'm stuck. I'm stuck here. But then this Kabbalist comes over, like, let's listen to this video. Now, like, you can make like make light from darkness. And I was like, how am I going to do that? I don't understand. They're like, <laughs> you can help people that are going through the same thing as you, or you can get all that nasty, icky feeling and make it into something. And that's where also the acting part comes into play, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and do you, but you could do that with anything. You could do that with the radio. Like, you, you know, you could do that with being an artist, being a doctor, you know, you go through something... But it's there for a reason, right? Right. And um, and you learn from it. And you learn from it. And that's okay. your retribution, right? But what do you say to any young women that might be watching or listening that are out there and they are depressed, but they don't want to say anything? 
I would say, I mean, the first and foremost is to recognize it, to recognize, you know, you have an issue, right? To say it and then to speak to somebody about it. And there are so many therapists out there and they have teletherapists as well, which is, oh, blows my mind. You can wow. call in and have talk to a therapist. That's nice. Which is really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, go to talk to somebody and also make sure, I, I hate saying force yourself to go out there, but Start to immerse yourself. Start to read something. Get okay. um, speak to people. Like if you usually, if you're wanting to stay home, so that's yourself. a sign. Wanting to stay in and not socialize wanting and to sleep. Stay, yeah, not, okay. Not wanting to either eating too much, eating too little. Um, not wanting to talk to anybody. Thinking that you don't have any friends. Thinking that somebody doesn't understand you. Mm-hmm. Feeling overwhelmed. Feeling that no matter what you do, it's never going to go right. Something's going to fail. Mm-hmm. Um, seeing you're. You know, you, you make you make steps every day toward a goal, right? But even t- these people, what ends up happening, and I, it happened to me, you're making your step toward a goal, and you would be like, that's nothing. That's just, that that happened by mistake. Something else is going to, you're Eeyore, pretty yeah, much. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you just have to get out of yourself and, and really talk to people and find groups of women that can help you. I mean... I'm part of a wonderful organization, the South Tampa. I'm from Tampa. Hi, mm-hmm. everybody. Yep. Um, the South Tampa Women's Club. Um, and I'm also part of an org- organization called Echoes. What's and that? Uh, Echoes is a young professional organization of women. Um, we've all gone through a lot of stuff, but we're all professionals. We want to help each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that. It's absolutely Women supporting women instead yes. of women breaking Bashing, down other women. Yes, yeah. exactly. Why, and that's, why do... Why do we do Why that? Why do women do that? Why? Why do I know? But they do. I don't get it. I genuinely don't understand it. And I, I think, think every it, woman, the first thing when they meet another woman is they're sizing her up as competition. It's horrible. I think that happens a it's, lot. It's, yeah. I've seen it before and I kind of back off and I mm-hmm. and we discuss this where I'm like, it's toxic, first of right. all. And it's it's a sign of insecurity. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a sign That's that something's not okay. true. It's something's not okay in here. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe somebody's broken you down. Who knows? But when you're sizing somebody else up, you're scared you're going to lose something. Right. And I've or they're going to take something oh, from you. Like, or, yeah. yeah. And, and particularly men. I Why? know. Like, I, I it don't know. It always comes down to But you're absolutely right. Yeah. I think that's the root of the whole problem. And I'm like, I love you. I just yeah. want to like love you. I just, you know, I let me I'm do I'm not trying to steal your man. No, I know. I, I just want to have a conversation. <laughs> I need a friend. And, yeah. you know, it's weird. And I've, I've always seen this. I'm like, guys, it's very rare that you see that between men. Right. With women, mm-hmm. it, it's just like, it's yeah. like the t- it's the they want to tear each other down, and that happens with young women, yeah, as well as I mean, I see it all it the way across, across the board. The it doesn't end. It never you goes away. think women get older and they learn, never. but no, 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 <laughs> yeah. no, no. We get older and we get a little bit stronger. We mm-hmm. know our self worth, and we're like, yeah, whatever. But it still happens. It's still there. It's still there. Yeah. Um, but these women, they come together. We just had a wonderful uh, talk I, that I spoke at. Um, for um, like discrimination, right? So, if, you know, how do we get discriminated in our everyday everyday lives? Mm-hmm. Um, feminism, intersectional feminism. So, yes, we are feminists, and no, we're not bra burners. I promise you, we're not <laughs> that. We don't hate people. We don't hate men. Um, but yeah, you can be a feminist, and you can be a woman. But being a woman. Um, as a black woman, as a Hispanic woman, as a woman that has autism, as a woman that I don't know is obese. It's cross-sectional feminism. So we had mm-hmm. this wonderful talk and they just, they bring to light a lot of issues. And then by understanding that, wow, we're all going through the same thing, it makes you stronger. Yeah. You're like, oh, mm-hmm. I have it my was, group. A support Yay. system. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it takes away that feeling of exasperation, mm-hmm. uh, that feeling of helplessness. So do you think people that are, because you did this uh, film on uh, suicide, mm-hmm. do you think people that are depressed and are con- Contemplating suicide, are afraid to tell anybody? Because in, in your little movie that I watched, mm-hmm. I don't think you actually did tell anybody till the very end. No, I did. I held yeah. it in. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, um, first of all, when somebody tells you that they are going to commit suicide, that was one thing that I learned from a therapist. Mm-hmm. Yes, my therapist. I love you, Gwen. Mm-hmm. Um, when somebody tells you that, somebody came up to me and they're like, "I can't do this. I'm gonna. I want to commit suicide." It's the fact that they're just saying, I can't take this anymore. Right. And usually people that do commit suicide, they're not, again, they're not going, going to tell you. They don't tell you. Okay. Um, they'll put on the happy face. And it, usually what it is is that they bottle it inside and um, they don't try to get help anywhere. And it's just this feeling of, this is never going to stop. Right. And it's a feeling There's no of, way to fix it. Right. This is, instead of saying, this is right now, 
This is just right now. It's not, it's not permanent. It's temporary. It's going to change. Things always change. They're like, this is how it's always going to be. I'm living they're in hell. Hopeless. And that's it. Okay. And they're stuck in that, in that rut. And I always say the only rut that you're going to be in, and even that's an adventure in itself, is death, right? So don't die. But that's the only absolute that we have in this life. Aside from that, everything's fluid. Mm -hmm. Everything's fluid. And mm -hmm. it just depends on how you perceive right. life. And it's a, it's a game of perception, right? Mm -hmm. You can say, oh, my God, it's raining today. It's horrible. I can't take it. And look at my makeup. It's horrible. We're like, wait, it's raining today. I don't have to go to that meeting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I can go to the mall. Right? I can go to the mall. <laughs> this is an excuse to get a nice pair of shoes that I've wanted because I ruined mine. So it's just a game of perception. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's a good um, way to look at it. Right. It's an active pursuit every day to say, okay, I'm in look the situation. Look at the positive, yeah. not, Try not the negative. Try to find the positive. Try to find gratitude. But if people are clinically depressed. It's hard. Yeah. It's very, very hard. Do so, you believe in uh, medication for that? I believe that there are some individuals that require medication. I mm -hmm. do believe, however, and I have always been the person that's like, don't smoke pot, don't do this. Don't. And looking at, I, I'm studying psychology um, right as of now. And yeah, you tell me about that. I'm looking at some of these studies with marijuana, and marijuana has a wonderful of, like, effect. It helps mm -hmm. people. It really oh, yeah. helps people. Mm -hmm. It helps with PTSD. It helps with anxiety. Sometimes there's a comorbidity. I've interviewed a doctor on the show about medical marijuana, and it it's helps. amazing what... It, what it can do. It helps with anything. The cava and kratom that does the same has the same effect. Did a show on that too. Uh, yes, it's very, <laughs> very, very interesting. Um, my mother, who is who is anxious all the time, she's like, "I like this tea," and I was like, "Well, thank you, mom. I could talk to you right now. Gotta Hi. give her some kratom. Hi, that, mom. Yeah, kratom will push it. <laughs> oh. yeah. So, um, you know, I do think though that. I am of the, um, there are two trains of thought, right? Some people go over and they say it's all medi medication. Mm -hmm. And there are individuals like me that say. And some people really need it. Some, some people, people do really without need it. it. Absolutely. Would not be able to some function. Some people have the, nece yeah. necess like there's. And a, that's okay. Their neural connectivity just needs it. Their, their mm -hmm. neurons aren't fi firing the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and that's fine. That is absolutely And it can change person fine. from night to day. I've seen that happen. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, a person can be crying all day long. Potentially, sometimes they hear things. Sometimes they're having paranoia. They take it for a month or so. And then they're completely fine. Now, yeah. there is um, a machine that I was, I think I was telling you about earlier, mm -hmm. a TMS machine. What is that? It is a, ma a magnetic machine that you sit under. And what it does is that, <clears throat> excuse me. It puts, uh, it manipulates your Wait, brain. Wait, before we go any further, tissue. I want to point out that yes. she's not only an actress, she's studying, tell Psych me again. So I'm studying psychology, but I'm wanting, I'm applying to go into a clinical psychology program. Okay. And what I'm wanting to do is to go into clinical neuropsychology. Okay, so, so she's yeah. not just talking off the cuff here. She's no, got I'm not, I promise. I'm like, oh, this is my past time oh, yeah. reading. I found it in Cosmo, it's great. <laughs> okay, go on. You're so saying. this, you go under this machine or what have you, and um, it sends uh, waves into your brain. And what, it's almost like a, a lesion, but it's not, a, it's not, you know, a true lesion. And it affects you automatically and it helps treat depression. Whereas medication would take oh, an entire month. Okay. This oh, takes... Immediately? Immediate. <gasps> That's and very good. And it helps good. people that are suicidal. That's um, great. Yeah. So it's immediate. And it helps you right then and there. How do people and find this if, they're, if they need if it? If you look up TMS, TMS uh, depression treatment, you'll find uh, a list of providers. Oh, that's great. We have okay. a lot of in Tampa. I'm now, so you guys this, have Is this stuff here. covered by insurance? Some of them are. I'm uh, not it sure. It all should be. I mean, that's, that's I think the that it's part. something, I mean, like seriously, mental health mm -hmm. is, it's the cornerstone of of where we are. Right. So that needs to be covered just like any other medical yes, condition. Yes, absolutely. I said, mm -hmm. I'm like, your brain affects your body. Right. And, and we've been looking at studies like that as well. Like if your brain is not feeling good, if you're feeling pain, there's something called epigenesis. And what ends up happening with that is that you're feeling a certain way. You have cortisol levels that are heightened or you're feeling pain. Your DNA is changing. It's not set hmm. in stone. Wow. So this idea of like, if you don't feel good, you're going to get sick or I used to hate hearing this if you don't feel good you're going to get cancer and i'm like oh my gosh <laughs> oh but i've heard that but sometimes that it's true the immune system Ab becomes weak absolutely and so mm -hmm. your dna under stress can get complete i mean you're affecting your dna with your mindset so yes mm -hmm. everything I to me i'm pushing the fact that if you have a mental issue and you need to go to the doctor your your mental health issues should always be covered by 
the insurance companies. So Absolutely. That's me. Absolutely. So that is it. But it, okay. going back to the movie. Mm-hmm. So, yes, what we're trying to do in um, Hollywood is really and truly showcase what it is like to have different types of mental issues. Somebody did a wonderful movie that was in Cannes. It was, what is it like to have PTSD? I don't have post-traumatic stress disorder to the extent that it was shown here. And I couldn't understand it. But once I left there, I could understand, oh my gosh, wow. Mm -hmm. That you're not, you're not a crazy lunatic. You have triggers and I needed to speak nicely to you i need to understand these things it gives you compassion right yeah. that's what movies give you compassion to right. understand where the other person is coming from so knowing that we're in hollywood knowing that there's a responsibility that we have as as actors producers directors that's what i loved about your movie thank you that was uh, you know, i think it's great for anyone that uh is to battling with depression suicide mm-hmm. right so like it you we just uh, it is our responsibility to help you understand humanity right mm-hmm. first and foremost i mean everybody yeah. loves to watch leo hi um <laughs> Uh, we like to we we like these these Marvel movies, but every now and then it's nice to sh- to see like look, this is what it's like to be human, and that's why you cry. It was right? a great movie, and it even explained. Um, if I can talk a little bit about it, absolutely. The um, your character was basically abandoned by her mother when she was a child, mm-hmm. and in a very traumatic n- way, and never knew why. Mm-hmm. But come to find out, the mother suffered from depression. Mm-hmm. And there might be a lot of people out there that didn't know that. Mm-hmm. And then, is there a genetic link? Is to that what suicide? to to depression and suicide? For some individuals, there is. Um, okay. There sometimes is a genetic link to suicidal ideation, to to depression, to anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot of studies that are going on with that as well. Okay. Um, but in this case, it could have just been situational because the mother left the child at a young age. She didn't know. She blamed herself. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know about you, but how many times have you sat down and, and somebody's acting ugly? And you think that it's all because of you, right? And right. It's really you can't not figure because out what you of did. you. Yeah, and then yeah. you're stuck feeling like eh, I don't. I understand. must have done something, right? And mm-hmm. it's not. And this person just had a bad day, and they're not understanding. To they, I'm all about telling my feelings, right? You're like, I feel this, I feel that. It took years for me to learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. But no, this person didn't say, "I feel." Leave me alone. I feel anxious right now. They just were mean to either you or myself, and we took it personally. Right. And it ruins your day. It could ruin your lifetime. Right. Um, and that's why I know yeah, I have somebody to talk to. I'm not sure if you do as well, but mm. you just it's good to talk to somebody. Right. You know, so to let it out there, to let somebody say it's not your fault. And sometimes you just need to hear that. Yeah. It's not your fault. It's mm-hmm. not, not, none of this is your fault or it's, this is none of your responsibility, right? You're a mom. Mm-hmm. I have a mother and I'm, you know, I'd love to have babies one day, but there's this idea like we have to always be responsible for everybody, right? And it's like, it's okay. This is not your responsibility right now. You can breathe. Yeah. It's and to, to allow us to hear somebody say that to you, not just to like know it, but for somebody to say, Becky, it's okay. You don't, you don't have to worry about anything. Just breathe See, and just have I a good time. That, that would be very important, particularly for young people yeah. that are going through all of these yeah. things. They don't need to figure it out right now. Right, they're young. They're, they got, the, <laughs> they they got really, the whole rest of their life. And, and that's, I went to a college mm-hmm. preparatory school. So when, and I love my school, but I thought at 17 years old, I need to know what I'm going to do with my life. Oh. And that's going to be the line. <laughs> that is, that's what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And that's so not you, the way life is. You were is anxious right because now. you didn't. You couldn't. I. That's I probably did, very common now. I didn't live enough to know. I mean, I didn't drive a car until I was what nineteen years old. I, you know, yeah. I was in college <laughs> when I was learning. So I didn't. You don't know at seventeen what you want to be. Right. You don't know now what you really want to do until like you're what. 23? Maybe never. <laughs> I don't know. But so many. And, and you. I mean, I had a career change. People have a career change. I was in law school. Oh yeah. And you I'm are. like. I don't, I don't want to do this. I had a breakdown. <laughs> I don't want to do this. And everybody is like, no, you have to. I'm like, I don't want right. to do it. Um, but it's this idea that you're expected to be something. And all you have to do is just be yourself. Right. And then you Because these days, uh, there's not that many things yeah. you can be with That's a college it. degree. As long as you are your authentic self and you find, to me at least, you find your passion. You find what you really love and you just make it grow. Mm-hmm. I don't care if you want to make paper flowers you put it on an put it on etsy nowadays right? and it really catches on <laughs> <laughs> like i want those paper flowers like please. the off the shoulder dress everybody's been walking around poking them around these there you go <laughs> <laughs> but you know you just have to 
<laughs> be authentic to yourself, and then that'll finally find you. And then you just yeah. let yourself. There's that Katy Perry song, right? The firework song. Just be mm-hmm. a firework. Yeah. Just let it go, and don't do your like. Be yourself unapologetically, and it will find you. I don't know how it happened. I, it mm-hmm. happened to me. Mm-hmm. You know, I had somebody tell me, "What are you going to do? Act now? What are you going to do?" I'm like. Well, actually, <laughs> I'm working with Jason Statham in a week. So, yes, I am going to act. Sorry. Um, and it's scary. It's yeah. really, really scary. But sometimes you just close your eyes and you're like, I'm doing this. I'm doing this and I don't care. Oh, yeah. yeah that's that's it. how young people do whatever they want to do. Yeah, Why not? Why right. not try it? <laughs> yes. And like, right? So, you know, you don't have to know. It, as long as mm-hmm. you continue, go. like the worst thing you could do is stop. That's it. Mm-hmm. Just don't stop. Right. You just do something every day that'll help you. Because every day will be different. And, and that's new it. possibilities will come along every day. That's it. And something, just, you know, look around and see, okay, what, what sign do I need to go after right now? What, am, what is coming my way that I need to... So you were in law school and oh. you just decided that's I not for me. I said, no, thank you. Lo. No, no, no. Loch mead. But you I got am not a, doing it. You got into good school because you I got into a good did very school. well, I guess, on all the time. I did really, really good in my LSAT. I did well in my classes. But I looked and I said, this is not my authentic self. And there were people around me that were lawyers. And they said to me, and mind you, there are attorneys that really love what they do. And God bless you guys. You are going to represent me in my future divorce. (laughs) So, yes. (laughs) I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, But for me, it wasn't me. And I had somebody tell me, you know, we're going through this trial right now. And you're going, you're studying for your finals. And I said, oh my God, I can't take it. I can't take this. They're like, well, that's what it's like to be a trial attorney. And that's what I wanted to do. Oh boy. And I'm over here like, I can't be the rest do this. I, no, I'm not doing this. I'm sorry. And so I you would, just walked away from law school. I, I walked away. But what happened was Good that I was you. going to my civil procedure class. And I just, when you're an actor, when something's inside of you, you're going to you do it. You want to be an actress. Yeah. I stopped my car and I was at the Columns restaurant in St. Charles. And I walked in and I said, I'm so sorry. I said, I have class right now. I'm at the, you know, I'm at this school. I'm heading to my civil procedure class. I can't take this anymore. I need an outlet. I will clean the gum off of people's shoes. I will hold a boom. I will do anything. And he looks at me and goes, you just walked onto set? And I said, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I'm a talent from, from Tampa. I just, I need something to do. I will clean anything. They're like, wow, you're, you're gutsy, kid. You're really just... Come on Saturday. Somebody like went over and they, yeah. they're not, you know, coming in. And I go over and they put a wig on me and I'm sitting down. And I, mind you, when you have the guts to go after right? something comes to you. I'm sitting down at a table. Forrest Whitaker is serving me tea and I'm on the set of the butler. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye law school. I'm like, bye. <laughs> Did you ever take the exam? I never <laughs> took my bar exam. <laughs> not, not the bar. Yeah, the, the, the bar exam. I'm like, I'm just, I'm not doing this. I love you guys, and my contracts class saves me every single day. Oh, yeah, that's that, important. I, I read contracts every day, so I'm not saying don't go to law school. Um, the classes that I that I took, they help me every single day. But, um, yeah, I just, I went for it. I went, and I, and I, and in the beginning, I was upset, because I'm like, oh, my God, I made everybody upset with me. <laughs> oh, my God. But, um once I went it's for it, yeah, I did it, and it made me feel so happy, and I'd never... I never turn back. I'm like, I, I get to work with Ben Stiller and Benicio Del Toro. I'm like, come well, on. Okay, we're, we're going to go to break yes. here. And then when we come back, you're going to tell us about all the famous uh, actors and actresses you've the worked with and all the, the movies cheese. you've done and yes, all that. And absolutely. what you got coming up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we'll be right back after the break. And listening to and watching the Becky and Boca Show. Ivy Lee's Lux Makeup and Beauty Lounge in downtown Boca Raton does fabulous professional makeup application. Make an appointment today and see how glamorous you can look. Call 561 409 4065 to book your appointment. Ivy Lee's Lux Makeup and Beauty Lounge is located at 233 South Federal Highway on the first floor of the Boca Grand Building in Boca Raton. The number again is 561-409-4065. 
And now, back to the show. I would hear people around going, do you know how many calories? Okay. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back to the Becky and Boca show. I'm with uh, celebrity actress Diana Durango. Hello. And uh, we were talking the first half about um, a little movie she's got coming out about mental health and suicide. Very enlightening. Great, great topic. It's on my um, Becky and Boca show Facebook page. There's a uh, trailer on there. And I just wanted to say, Rick Danford is the what the other is the producer of it. So you okay. did an amazing, amazing job. And who's the Man other actress you worked Nancy with? Nancy Alexander. She okay. was breathtaking, and this yeah. was really, really hard for her. She so played she was your mother. Amazing. Yeah. Yes, that was very good. But now I want you to tell us about all the other um, famous actors you've worked with, oh, and oh, 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 and oh. the other stuff you've done. So the most recent one uh, was my with my director Ben Stiller. Okay. Um, so that was. What's he like? He is absolutely. He's so much fun. He is yeah. so so much seems fun. Like, seems like he would be. He. I. I walked in. I know. I wasn't expecting to see him for my audition. They had me. I was in Plattsburgh for this audition for Escape at Danamora, and they're like, "Okay, we're going to have you come in as a news anchor lady." So I'm over there and I'm nervous and I'm nervous and they're like, "You need for you to stay. We need you to stay." And I was staying. For, I stayed for like three days. I thought I was going to be in and out. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Whatever. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I ended up going to Canada for a little bit. Whatever. I walk in the last day. Nobody said anything when they were coming out of that audition room. And I walk in. And I'm like, oh, hi, cutie he's patootie. <laughs> <laughs> you said that? <laughs> I didn't want to, but he's so cute. So he was doing the auditions? He was He was okay. at that last audition. Okay. And um, I was taken aback because his eyes were you are so... Were scared then so to do your... I do this thing. So that I, I, I have anxiety. So my heart starts to race right before. But then once I'm there, I don't know what it is. Get into I'm it. okay. And okay. I, I make a little joke. I make a little funny. And then I'm fine. So I started, he gave me my lines. And there's some pretty serious lines. They you give know? you your lines like, and you walk in? You don't get to like study them I before? had my lines three days in advance. Okay. But then he gave me an extra line. And I'm like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm going to mess loop. this one up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so um, he gave me an extra line. I said I didn't get those. He goes, oh, just go with it. And then I said the line. And it was just too quiet and so I made a joke and he's just holding his mouth and he's like and she goes and Rachel who's the, the camera person she goes cut and he goes oh my god that was awesome yeah. but you know he's 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 authentic he's genuine he's gone through a lot um, he had a cancer scare oh I didn't know that and yeah so that I think changed him a lot and he again that was his passion I mean, he wanted to make movies and you know, he's always been an actor but he really wanted to make something mm -hmm. of substance and that was probably um one of the bigger sets that I've ever been on. I mean, they had an entire city and shut where was down. This? Plattsburgh. Um, so we were at the Danamora Prison um, around the Plattsburgh area, which is where upstate New York. Okay, and it's That's cold. And it this is a movie about the the two prisoners that broke yes. out. Yeah. Okay. So that was the two prisoners that broke out at the at the prison. They were out for I, I don't know like months. Mm -hmm. And these poor people. I mean, these men were killers. These men were doing atrocious things to people. And when you go up there, it's super, super dark. I mean, uh, dark. There's no yeah, light. I know. I've been up in that area. It's just <laughs> so scary. Up there with prisoners on the loose. And like, right. And they're prisoners on the loose. <laughs> and these people can't go anywhere, right? right? And they would hear creaks. I was talking to the people like, yeah, we'd hear creaks. And we were like locking our doors. And they, they thought that they were going to die at any moment. Yeah. And looking at them, looking at Patricia Arquette and her transformation. She's in the movie with you? Yeah. She okay. is abs She played um, the, the woman that, that, that helped them get out. Her, oh, okay. Her transformation, I get goosebumps. Like, just her transformation just was like Charlize Theron's transformation from Monster, another movie I was in. And they're not just a pretty face, right? Like, they're real, true actors. She had no problem just becoming this woman. She gained weight. She made her hair frizzy. She had. Yeah, that's a real actress willing right? to do that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I looked at her, and she just was in that zone. And I get in that zone as well. We're method actors. But I just was taken aback. And then Benicio, with his presence, I mean, that man is like a lion. Yeah. <laughs> he gets intense. So I did that. And then you guys have a wonderful production happening in Miami called Paper Empire. Oh, what's that one about? So it is about, I'm not, I'm not privy to say, but it's just very opulent with its toys and, and all these oh. wonderful things that you guys get to play with down here. Very so, Miami, huh? Yes, very, okay. very Miami. So <laughs> Denise Richards, Richards is in it. That'll be a good one. It. Yes. Denise is, Richards is in it. Oh. Uh, Wesley Snipes. Oh. Steve Gutenberg. Do you remember him? From yes, Three I Men and sure a Baby. Yep. Um, he's in it. And my favorite person, who's a good friend of mine, he became a good friend of mine, is Robert Davi. Do you know who that is? No. He was the opera singing bad guy in The Goonies, one of the Petrelli brothers. Oh, okay. 
So th- he just comes in with this force, but they're all down in Miami. And Is that filming now? That's filming now. It's off and on. Um, Robert Gillings is the director. Absolutely amazing. Um, oh, I can't wait to see that one. I like to see local stuff. so much fun. And yeah. I told Robert, I was like, you have to come on come on set. So when he's back down here, I told him, I was like, you have to come over and talk to Becky. Yeah, so, yeah we loved fun. it. Um, but a lot of wonderful actors come out, uh, actors, directors come out of New York, like Elias Plagianos. Mm-hmm. Um, he did a, um, a show that we're still in the process of pushing it forward. But I worked with Linda Hamilton, which was absolutely oh, awesome. Wow. And uh, Bill From S- Terminator. Yes, oh, the yeah. Terminator mom. So I'm there yeah. with her and I was like, oh my God, you're Linda Hamilton. <laughs> <And> she's <laughs> so sweet about it. And uh, so Linda, Bill Sadler, Jackie Martling, just Great people. Debbie Markowitz is another one of my favorite directors. She's my mentor. She's oh. she's part of my network when things are going rough. She goes, just oh, take nice. your inner goddess and let her come out. And she's my strength. So mm-hmm. she's out there as well. There's, there's so many things. There's so many it productions. Be, it, it's a whole different way to make a living being in uh it's hard because it's it, they come and go <laughs> and sometimes you're not working and sometimes you are. Yeah. So somebody told me if you're going to go into film, you have to be intelligent. And I always, when I was younger, I'm like, oh, you just have to be a face. You have to be pretty. Yeah. You just put yourself out there. And no, you have to know, you have to, and you don't understand this too, you have to know business. You have to know what's going on in the world. You have to be okay with yourself. You have to go inside and get those ugly places to come out. Um, and it's a hustle. So if you it is finish That's- your production, you better... In- know what you're doing next because nobody's well, going to do that I think for you would be frightening about the uh about your field yeah is you don't, you know, don't know what's coming <laughs> yeah you don't know you what don't you're know doing you're like, i need to stay relevant uh, right <laughs> i think that's it's, the big thing with yeah. actors yeah and it's you know once they finish something really big that's not over yeah and that, it's now scary. they gotta find the next thing and it's looking looking at what maybe even just two years ago three years ago women we had a terminal point it's like, okay, well, right. you're too old to go I to that's L.A. Changing, though, 30, right? yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You see Nicole Kidman, Reese Witherspoon. Mm-hmm. We're pushing um, more female-oriented, real, real female-oriented mm-hmm. movies where we're not looking for somebody that's 19 or 23. We're mm-hmm. looking for somebody that's real in her 50s, in her 60s, to show that, like, this is relevant right yeah. now. So we don't have a terminal point anymore. Right. But that was scary back then. We're like, I have to make sure that I look young. I have to make sure yeah, that be. I look I look great. <laughs> yeah, I have, than you are. I'm, you know, I have brunette hair, and that's my real color of my hair. But I was making my hair blonde, blonde. Yeah, I know that. And I was losing my hair because, and like, legitimately oh, losing my hair. <laughs> And I'm just thinking oh, to myself, that's not good for just, acting. That's not good. I'm like, what am I going to do? Go, I, I could play powder from, you know, what, from way back in the day. And I, I said, no, I'm not going to do this. I, I can't. But thankfully, we don't have a terminal point. Right. But we do have a hustle. And we do have to show that we're strong. Um, so so we how do you to, get picked up for other movies? To, uh, people see you out there and you get calls? Or do you have to go so look for stuff? Or? Sometimes I do look for things. Um, mm-hmm. I'm a SAG actress. I'm a Screen Actors Guild actress, thankfully. Um, and so we have a wonderful platform that shows the SAG auditions that we have. Oh, they give you places that you could go to mm-hmm. audition? Oh, cool. And okay, I'll show that, that to you. So like, okay. it's really, really cool. But um, a lot of times people, once you, you set the bar for yourself and people know what they're working with, and mm-hmm. they know that they don't have to coddle you in, in your professional. Mm-hmm. They're like, okay, we want to work with right. that person. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you saw, I, I just get very, very oh, intense. You're, I, yeah, you're and, very, you are a very talented <laughs> actress, no, no doubt. And so thankfully, and I wasn't always like that. I trained in New York with Maritza Bustamante and Lola Cohen at the Strasbourg studio. Before that, I didn't really know what acting was. Mm-hmm. And they got me to that place that's, my mother says I look like I'm going crazy, but that's fine. It's okay. <laughs> um <laughs> Thank you, Mom, <laughs> for putting up with me. Um, but people, once they, they hear that about you, they want to use you, you right. more, and they want to bring you back. And, and mm-hmm. also, you know, producing and directing myself, if you're going to come onto one of my sets and you're complaining, I'm not eating, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, I don't want to be here, you don't want to yeah, work with right. that person. So not only do you have to get to that place, right, as an actor, but mm-hmm. you have to be likable and nice. Right. And, or you're and, you not going to get your next job. And you're not going to yeah. get your next job. So it's a nice balancing act. And again, for women, especially with the Me Too movement, there's a balancing mm-hmm. act, act with sexuality and so power. So what do you think about the Me Too thing since you've actually been oh. in this business for a while? Is, that, every, is it true? Uh, it's every single one of my male directors have 
been wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I even met Harvey Weinstein, believe it or not, in Cannes. How was he? <laughs> Harvey <laughs> never did anything nasty to me. He he put his finger on my back. He like traced my back. Okay, no, then wait a minute. And that's, I, I that's kind of it's, it's a little it's a it's a why step. Why was he a, touching you? I, it's Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but no, 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 that's no, the no, problem. No. So yeah, so that's the problem. So <laughs> I went over and I said, "Well, isn't that nice? Can I get you a drink now?" <laughs> and he didn't go further than that. But okay. um, I do think that maybe it, he did do things to those women, and that's atrocious. Yeah. But for me, none of my male directors did that to me. Um, the, my female directors did not accept for two. Um, I had one that she insisted on putting my check between my cleavage. And oh, she goes, yeah. I just want to do this. I've been wanting to do this so badly. She puts it there. She puffs <laughs> them up. And I'm like, well, thank you. Um, and then there was another one. And I just didn't wow. think that she had me massage her buttocks on set. And then she had me like do things <laughs> With you what? know, with her son, and to go take you know take you know to to take her son out to her on a, on a pseudo date, and it was very innocent. But to me, that's inappropriate. Yes. It was an inappropriate yes. gesture to to do that and to take me away from Wait, me acting. So you had you massage her buttocks on set, on set, on and set. then she asked you to go out on a date with her son. A little uh, with her eight year old son. Oh, eight year old had her eight year old son come up to me, and, and it, like you know, and God. Uh, God bless him, and he he's a very he's a sweetheart. But when I'm an actress with anybody, I mean, this sounds weird to you, right? Uh, yeah. When yeah. you're an actress, you're there to act. That's mm -hmm. outside of the professional sphere right. of anything. And I'm not there to be your babysitter. Mm -hmm. I'm not there to to take your son on a date and to embarrass me in front of everybody. Like people looked and they were laughing because you're massaging her. Oh, that, and also the fact that. She, like I'm having to go on this date with this little Wait, what boy. Do you want a date? Uh, <laughs> I took we we went somewhere and I was like, can we bring somebody else with us? Because this is just a little weird. And this person, she she scared me. Like she genuinely yeah. scared me. Um, she would blow up all the time, and people uh -huh. were seeing that. And they and I finally said, I can't do this. Um, it got to a point where I I myself I asked went to a psychiatrist and I said, can I please take medication because I have to go work with this <laughs> woman <of> her. <laughs> and. I and it, that didn't make me feel good, no. and people were seeing it. And I finally left, mm -hmm. um, and I said, "I can't, I can't do this." And I spoke to people. So she was I, taking advantage of her position as the director. Yes. And she had power over and you, it, and she was trying to get you to do. Yeah, and she said, "So you thought it's going to lead to more?" <laughs> nobody likes you. No, you're a method actor. That's very selfish of you. And I'm like, eighty percent of the selfish Oscar of winners are method actors. How is that a wrong <laughs> thing? Um, and God bless her. Maybe she didn't know what she was doing was yeah. incorrect. Um, but looking back at it in hindsight and talking to several people about it, they're like, Diana, that's, that's not okay what she was doing. Right. And people from set were also telling me that's not okay what she was doing to you. And we all saw that. And we eventually told her something. Um, but again, I wish her well, mm -hmm. but to me, the Me Too movement, I do feel that we do need to set boundaries and we need to let people know very clearly um, this is not what I stand for, even at the expense of us. But don't you think that could affect your um, rising star? I, I think mean, well, let's that's look why at this. people do it, right? So let's look at look at this scenario with this with this woman. I was doing it for I was working mm -hmm. on this project for years, and this person said to me, "You're never going to get another job in your life because I have pull," and I was Ugh. petrified, petrified, until the point where it's like it just was too much. And I'm like, I don't care. I really, I really, really no, don't care. she loses the power when you say I don't care. Yeah, and yeah. I just, and I walked away. And thankfully, more stuff is coming. That's when mm -hmm. I started working with Ben. That's when I started working on this stuff with Linda Hamilton. Um, but, yeah, it, it, you have to sometimes make a stand. Just like Ashley Judd, she made a stand. Mm -hmm. She, You probably didn't see her for a while, but she made a stand. And she made a voice. I, I'd rather be a voice for someone yeah. than stand for something that I know I'm not standing for. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I shouldn't see, no, stand you, for. You, you're a more mature than uh, a lot of women uh, your age, and there are a lot of younger women going yeah. into this industry. So I imagine a lot of young, naive women where you could understand how the whole Harvey Abs Weinstein thing would happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they were victims. They are. There was somebody there that can pretty much blackball you, and right. you do get blackballed. I mean, it's it's a thing that happens. It happens in any profession, but mm -hmm. this one, it, it's intense. Um, and you could get blackballed, and a lot of them did. It's it's very unfortunate. Yeah. Um, 
And it's scary. It's if you do not have that armadillo skin right. to say, I don't care what you what you say about me, you're done in this business because there are going to be people that tell you you're not going to get anywhere without me. There are going to be people that say, who the heck do you think you are? You're nothing special. And I've had that said to me, oh, by the boy. way. <laughs> this is a brutal um, industry. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, there are people that say, who do you think you are? You're nothing special. You need to lose weight. You need to gain weight. I don't like how this looks on you. And you just look and you say, well, then, you know what? I'm not I'm the right not actress for you. the right actress yeah. for you. This is not obvious. This obviously, acting and movie making, I always say it's like a marriage. You have to, like, go through a few ugly frogs and you find one and you have this marriage with them and a little short-term marriage and then it works. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting down with your boyfriend, right, and you're not feeling it, you leave. Because if not, you're, you're wasting your time. It's going to be right. an ugly relationship and you're, you know... Um, but for the longest time, I try to make things work when they shouldn't have been working. Right. Rubbing people's tukuses when I shouldn't ah. have been rubbing them. <laughs> um, but I how, What did you think when she asked you to do that? I went over and I had my face and I looked over at somebody and I looked and they go. And I, I was like, really? <laughs> and. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, that happened. And oh, again, God bless her. I wish her the best. I mm -hmm. really, really wish her the best. And I, I thank her. Um, there's obviously a reason why I'm not mentioning her name. Oh, yeah. Um, maybe she just didn't know. Mm -hmm. But I just couldn't take that anymore. Yeah. So, um, but again, like, I have wonderful director, female directors, Judy San Roman, um, Debbie Markowitz. I've had Mary Anginino, Lynn Ann Daly. Like, they just all come together to uh, be women that really want to you want to be in productions that really want to um showcase women showcase our power and again the other thing is showcasing a female's power doesn't mean that we're bashing men or bashing right. each other um we're not slut shaming i hate slut shamers that is not okay okay what's a slut shamer okay so <laughs> slut shaming 101 Slut shaming. I'm certain that we've had these issues. Um, and it doesn't only pertain to s calling somebody a slut. If you are sexually liberated, a man goes out and is like, oh, yeah, you see her? I mean, I had her yesterday. This and that. Blah, blah, blah. He's cool because he's a man, right? He's, mm -hmm. That's his virility. Whereas women, we go on dates. You go on too many dates. You're a slut. Yeah. Right? You kiss too many people. You're a slut. God forbid you even have sex because we're all supposed to be like, you know, virgins. Right. Yay. <laughs> um, also, women that that speak up for themselves, right? If we speak up for ourselves, we're too loud. We're verbose. We're like, we are power and hungry. professional women. A lot of men are afraid of professional women. Uh, absolutely. We're mm -hmm. verbose. We're power hungry. We're crazy. God forbid we're the B word. And I, God knows you, we hear that all the time. Or if it's a man, well, he really has his stuff together, right? That's, yeah, that's he's a, form. a powerful guy. Yeah, he's so powerful. I like him. Whereas <laughs> women... It's scary. You're like, ooh, I don't know. And then th we and women do it to each other. We don't like her. She's she, the she's a I hate this word a whore. I don't like that. I just don't. Yeah. And that's slut shaming. It's slut shaming one on one. Look it up. Um, okay, Amber, I've never heard that term. But Amber I will. Amber Rose has a <laughs> slut shame walk um, in L A. And she dresses in her stilettos, and everybody just funny. shows their you know their femininity. And it's just not. It's not saying I want to be a slut. It's just like don't title me as something yeah. and make me stay in this box when you were able to get away with so much so um so and i think that standard. we're all victims of that as well right i'm certain yeah. and that, that has to do with the insecure woman mm -hmm. right this absolutely. is one of the first things that she does she has right. to like yep. cut you down <laughs> absolutely like, well, we gotta change again. that yeah we've got about 10 more minutes so yes. i want you to tell us all your films you've been in okay you got a list of them so oh goodness gracious i mean you can't remember all of them maybe i know there's 30 plus. my first film was monster with Shirley theron i remember that one that was intense patty jenkins wow. awesome. now what, what did you play in that movie i was okay so i was 17 years old i was supposed to have a line and i was supposed to say the f word Okay. I was like, what the F is your issue? When she threw a man over a, a table. Okay. But I was 17 years old. I w didn't meet the mark. So they cut it out. But you see me there. You see me there. <laughs> they cut out your speaking part. They okay. cut out my speaking part. My first speaking part. <laughs> um, so then I did a few um, movies in college. One was 99. Um, that was interesting. That was a very, very interesting film. Um, another big one after that was during law school. So we had... Hot Tub Time Machine. These, these are just like extra things. I remember things. that movie. Hot Tub you Time Machine. Hot Tub Time Machine Two. I was one of the girls that was like talking to the to the guy. Nothing big. Nothing big. So these okay. are like the little tiny ones. Yeah. Hot Tub Time Machine Two. The Butler. 
Hitch. What is the other one that I remember? Oh, uh, oh goodness, the one with Sylvester Stallone. They shot it in New Orleans. That's when I met Rami Mal- Malik. Rami Malik. He's oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, he was in New oh. Orleans. Then my first like actual casted role um, was for with Jason Statham in a movie called Wild Card. Okay. And it was a new rendition of Burt Reynolds' movie Heat. Oh, yeah. So I was Wendy. I was the, the girl at the poker table. Cool. That was interesting. Then I came here. I did Hit Women. Then I went back up north, and I did Disco, which was hilarious. Sounds right? like fun. It's fabulous. How can we watch these movies? You can watch them on Vimeo, Amazon Prime. Uh, where else are they on it? There's some that are on Netflix. Okay. Um, I've watched I'd a few of them. Please do. Like, just yeah, sit down, to. have some wine, and we'll laugh. Yeah. Um, of, what was it? Disco. And what then was, there was Disco about? Disco was about this. Okay. There was a time bet- like when Disco was fading out. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you saw John Travolta coming in with, like, the cowboy thing. Right. It was about that, like, really weird transition. You're like, where did this come from? Disco? Cowboy boots. I don't understand. Do we want to have, like, boots with, like, sequins on it? I don't get it. Um, so, it was that's that was that movie. Um, what else did we have? Uh, Fair Market Value. That was with um, Michael Bublé's wife. She is oh. an amazing actress. Now, Absolutely. what's Fair Market Value about? That was about the the what was it the cutthroat industry of selling a house oh and it's hilarious my it's real absolutely friends to watch that. wonderful <laughs> and then i did um i did uh what happened last night so that was with amber I saw that rose one recently that was you carried that movie, <laughs> let me tell you thank you you were yeah. or she the guy goes hey what's going on like don't just don't just don't <laughs> it's a great movie about um going to college. a college party and getting yeah. drunk I'm trying to get my my friend hooked up with another fellow <laughs> and um in the it process i fall in love with somebody so it was like it was awkward <laughs> it was a very cute movie yeah that, movie. there was that and then um there was a follow-up uh with a series okay um and then what else did we do what else did we do i'm trying to think we had the escape of danamora and mm-hmm. then i had something called uh by Blood. That was a, li- a little short film. That's on Amazon Prime. I haven't seen that one yet. It's intense. That's the horror one where it's... you were like, oh, you know, oh like no, that ghost? was oh that was uh, Mirror Mirror. Oh, that I was see that oh, one too. That one. That's about where you talk into the mirror. Me. Yes. Um, Bloody Mary or Bloody something. Bloody like Mary. That. Oh, that's got to be good. How do people find that one? That one is coming out. So like we're okay. still in the process of distributing that one. Okay. Um, but that one was intense. That one I they did my makeup. Yeah, and I saw I a picture. Looked, I had my eyes closed and. The woman that came in, the original Bloody Mary, Rowena, she's amazing. I looked at her and I was like, <gasps> I was like can I just touch you just to make sure that you're real? And then she's like, close your eyes. So I looked at myself and then I look and I'm like, oh my God, this is not me. This is the weirdest thing. I'm like, yeah, how do were, I get to... You were pretty scary in that I one. was. I made myself very angry at the end. I'm like, all those ex-boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> so we did that. And then we have um, the suicide film. Mm-hmm. And then there That's is... That's a very good one. And is that going to be entered in... What was that? A uh, competition or something? There are a few competitions. It'll be at the Sunscreen Film Festival. Okay. Um, we're putting... We're Can people see the whole um, the whole movie other than not, just the trailer? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. But once we have it, I will definitely send you the link yeah, for that. Yeah, I'll put that. it on my... Uh, Social media. And then Tampa has a few Hallmark films that are coming out. Um, Tony Armour is bringing them. I love you, Tony. Um, and there is a, what is the movie called? Oh, goodness gracious. Where the Land Meets the Sky with Preston Scott. So Ooh. that one is beautiful. That is a another um, story of transformation where a little girl saves, pretty much she's sa- saving her dad from alcoholism. You it's were telling hard. me about that. That sounds like a great premise for yeah. a movie. That's just, it's beautiful. So she, her father was an alcoholic and the mother dies or the, something? The mom dies, the father's an alcoholic. The I believe the grandparents want to take the little girl. Try to and take it's his this daughter. entire story of this transformation of all of these characters. Beautifully written. I mean, it's not it's not flat. Mm-hmm. There are all these arcs and sub arcs and, and it's mm-hmm. just absolutely amazing. And I, to me that's that's my thing now as an actor. It's I don't I was always the girl with the pretty teeth and the blonde hair and oh, that's me, I'm gonna look cool. Mm-hmm. And I now you want substance. I want substance. Yeah. I want to, to no, make I can that, see that story. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm like I'm not just that person anymore. Yeah. I like the so, suicide film that that can save yeah. people. Yes, Definitely. absolutely. So mm-hmm. um, and then there's another suicide film with that Rick Danford is making. It's called uh, A Daisy Amongst the Weeds, and that's um, suicide as it pertains to children going to school now and wanting to to kill themselves and kill others around them oh, and it's it's an epidemic i think it, it's something that's really yeah, it, we're not too far huge. from stoneman douglas high school here oh my gosh that's right yeah. that just 
it, it's it's a thing. What mm-hmm. happened? I know that we don't have a lot of time, but what happened that day? Did they shut everything down? Yeah, well, it was just, it was all over the news, and it was local here, and it was just uh, incredible that that, that could happen anywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. And that's so this movie is about a kid that contemplates doing something like yeah. that, right? Con- contemplates killing himself, potentially others, and his teacher. Um, so murder-suicide. Yeah. And wow. that's what we're doing. We're just going yeah. forward and trucking and... Okay, we got we got to wrap oh, this up here. Where do you well, see yourself in five years, Diana? Oh, goodness. I would... <laughs> I am okay, so I'd still like to be a filmmaker. I'm doing mm-hmm. a documentary. I, know you're doing that. I have okay. a documentary um, that I'm trying to uh, show what's happening to the Bolivian prison children. I'd really, okay. the next five years, I want that to to burst open pretty okay. much. So I want to do that. I do want to be a filmmaker, um, okay. and I also want to go into clinical psychology. Right. So I don't know how I can do Amazing that. Amazing yeah. woman. Okay, actress Diana Durango. Thank you thank very much. And watch my social media because you're going to give me that uh, link. I'll link when it comes out. Okay. All right. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. You have been watching and listening to The Becky and Boca Show. Tune in every Thursday night at 6 p.m. to discover all the ways to spoil yourself and have a good time in beautiful Boca Raton. See you next week.